Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a good old fashioned makeup video. I haven't done a sit down makeup video in ages. Makeup video, I feel like that's not the phrase. Get ready with me. I don't know, just like a classic, showing you some vegan and slightly more natural makeup. I actually just received some Axiology bits in the post today and I've also got a couple of like a new SPF I wanted to show you. Um, just some new brands to me and new products to me that I've been testing out. I'm gonna put them on my face and yeah have a little chat have a little chin wag so let's get started first off i have already got a little bit of moisturizer on this is the q a ginger root daily moisturizer this brand is relatively new to me and i think i need to test some of their products out a little bit before i give a proper review but what i liked about them is that they've got little checklists on the back so it has one column that says how does it help and then it's got a little list of different things you want from your skincare and then it ticks the things that it will help with and then it says what kind of skin type is it suitable for so this is suitable for stressed skin dry skin sensitive skin normal skin or combination skin um, I just think that's very clear very easy when you're shopping for skincare so that's been sitting on my skin for a while and then I'm going to go on, on top with some SPF so this is the comfy water sunblock SPF 50 PA plus 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 70% water based formulation blah 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 by Purito. So Purito is a Korean skincare brand and I was recommended them through Ethical M on Instagram and she said that I should check this out because I mentioned the Hint Beauty Sun Prep which is a very similar SPF product so she recommended it saying that it's really similar, it's a lot cheaper and it's also a higher SPF. So I picked this up off of Beauty and Soul on her recommendation and oh my goodness this is amazing. It is my favourite SPF I've ever tried and also it's a mineral SPF so I tend to opt for mineral sun protection which is like a physical barrier to the sun as opposed to chemical because I have sensitive skin and I just find most chemical sun protection irritates my skin. I would recommend to a friend. This is honestly so good and it's £16 compared to the Hint Beauty £52 and I think you get more you get more product with this as well. I feel like it doesn't leave too much of a white cast as well, which is sometimes an issue with mineral sun protection. Um, and it's really lightweight compared to some, like for example, the Ren Skincare. This is their Clean Screen Mineral SPF 30. This is nice, but it definitely feels like sun cream, which is the, the story for a lot of mineral sun protection that I try like the Ultra Sun one, it's not terrible at all and I use it and I enjoy it and I use this one sometimes as well, but it's definitely thicker. Like if you want something really lightweight, I'd say this is suitable for oily skin, um, which obviously I don't have oily skin, but I would be pretty confident. That, like it's very lightweight, it doesn't feel greasy at all and yeah, does the job really well. It also acts as a really nice primer. So should I go in with some, maybe a little bit. Day to day I tend to just skip primer and just use SPF as primer, but um, sometimes I like to pop a little bit of primer around my nose because I, I sneeze at pretty much anything, like my, I feel like I'm gonna sneeze now. That obviously means I have to blow my nose and makeup comes off this area. But this is a face primer. It's by Jane Ardell and it's their Smooth Affair for Oily Skin Facial Primer and Brightener. So it kind of just looks like a lotion, feels like a lotion. It kind of just feels like a moisture, like a light lotion to be honest. It doesn't really have that silicone feel, which I don't really mind in a primer product, but I know some people try and avoid. Jane Ardell are an interesting brand because, well for me they're an interesting brand because when I first got into cruelty free, if you've been watching my channel for a while, when I first got into cruelty free beauty and I was kind of in that transition shade, transition shade, <laughs> transition phase between cruelty free beauty things and then vegan things and natural things and I was just investigating all these different wonders of the beauty world that I hadn't really come across before. And I tried, in, in a similar bottle to this, I tried the Jane Ardell BB Cream because all of the green beauty bloggers were saying, like, it's amazing, it's so great. And I bought it when I was at uni and I think I've, I've shown it on my channel, I'm pretty sure, back in the day. And it's awful, it's really bad. My dad's in the loft, did you hear that? <laughs> my dad's just clambering around in the loft. Honestly, it's trying to film my YouTube videos when I still live at home is a real ordeal. I mean, it's fine, you know, it's not, it's not a, um, big deal but I really have to time it when I choose to put my camera up and start filming because sod's law I'll put the camera up and then five seconds later my dad will be like crunching across the gravel because he's always like pottering and doing things I don't know if you can hear me but he's always like pottering and doing things and um he'll be like crunching across the gravel in the front garden or he'll be like dragging the wheelie bins <laughs> across the gravel or like driving his car back and forward or just he just causes a right racket so yeah if you can hear him I, I can only apologize but 
It's his house, his rules, you know? Anyway, what was I talking about? Jane Ardell. Just putting a bit of the Pixie brow gel on, which I actually don't recommend, but I'm just trying to use it up because I don't want to waste product. But yes, after hearing such great reviews for this BB cream, I was shocked and appalled. It was so thick and cakey, and it, it wasn't cakey, it just kind of sat on the skin. You know those products, kind of like the Hourglass Vanish Stick, which I feel like if you just use a tiny, tiny amount, it's fine. But if you swipe it on your face like you, you'd think you would need to, it feels so... It doesn't feel heavy, it just kind of sits. I don't know how to describe it, but you know the kind of product that you know as soon as you wipe your face, it will come off on your hand or your clothes. It doesn't set, that's what I'm, last the phrase I'm looking for, it never set down, and it also broke me out really badly. So after that, I wasn't too keen on Jane Ardell, but they kindly sent me a few things across and I've actually been enjoying what I have been trying. So that's the story behind that. Next I'm gonna move on to concealer. Um, this is the EX1 Delete Fu Delete, oh, what's this called? Delete Fluid, Fluid Concealer, full cover, and I've got mine in the shade 1.0. 1.0. This reminds me of the Pro Longwear Concealer by MAC, which I used to use back in the day. Well, I kind of dabbled in MAC a little bit when I first got into beauty, and then I went cruelty free quite soon afterwards. Yeah, this reminds me in packaging wise, and kind of in product wise, like as in the actual effect of it. It reminds me of the MAC Pro Longwear, which is a good concealer, it's not cruelty free. So I don't recommend, but I did used to like it back in the day. I picked this concealer up in Superdrug in Birmingham, if you were wondering, uh, when I was visiting recently. The Bull Ring, the Birmingham Bull Ring Superdrug has got so many brands. It's got a huge elf stand. I also picked up the elf concealer. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you may not know, or if you missed my post because of the rubbish algorithm. Um, you may not know, but I'm no longer purchasing from Too Faced and I won't be featuring their concealer on my channel because even though they are cruelty free, owned by parent company, but they are cruelty free with vegan options, they're just shady in ways that, do you know what I was thinking about? I was thinking, because I didn't really know that, the only thing I knew about Too Faced that was a little bit iffy was that they sometimes name their products a bit like overly sexually that makes any sense but just kind of names that are just a little bit unnecessary there's so many words out there why do you have to use I suppose sex sells at the end of the day that's probably why they do it but it's that kind of shock factor sometimes I feel like with Too Faced and that's the only kind of dodgy thing I had heard about them but then all this stuff came out after Nikki Tutorials came out and then I just kind of found out some things that I was just thinking why am I purchasing from this brand like they're so iffy and people in association with the founder of Too Faced just very strange, I, I, not even, not strange, that's the wrong word, just not acceptable. I don't know, I can't, I'm not very good at articulating these things. I'm sure you can find the hashtag drama online, but basically I won't be using that product anymore. And that is thankfully actually the only product I purchase from them. I typically don't really shop with Too Faced that often because they are owned by Estee Lauder, but that concealer in particular lasted all day. If you want to know the concealer I'm talking about, in fact I'm not going to show it, but it's the Born This Way multi-use sculpting concealer. Um, so I'm trying to find a dupe for it is what I'm saying, hence why I picked this product up because it is really full coverage, it lasts a really long time and it is really, it's a good product but I just don't stand by the brand. And I was in um, Space NK earlier today and I was just looking at these brands and I was thinking, see none of these brands have ever had a scandal like Too Faced has. Like I was thinking about Hourglass and I just thought, you, like it's not that difficult to just not be a bitch, you know, as a brand, like why can't you just provide good beauty products, be inclusive, provide a nice community and not do shady things, like it's just so unnecessary, it's, uh, yeah, that, I'm just, I'm gonna stop now because I'm just gonna start ranting and raving and that's not what you came for. I've kind of used this concealer as a foundation all over my face but feels really lightweight, gives really good coverage, I'm really liking it so far and it's paraben free, vegan, the whole range I think is paraben free, vegan and it says natural, I don't know what that means, natural, but it says natural. I might just take a little bit, because I need a bit more coverage underneath my eyes, I'm going to take a little bit of this, this is a cardboard, did I say that weirdly? This, I'm going to take a little bit of this, this is the Colour Caramel Concealer or I'll leave the name down below if you're interested, but I picked this up off of Glow Organic about a year or two ago. So it's probably past its sell-by date. 12 months, yeah, it's, it's fine, it still works. I'm, I'm still living and breathing and I'm still here, aren't I? This is a pot concealer, which I typically don't opt for. I don't really go for pot concealers because I do find they crease really badly. I feel they don't last very well. 
I do wish Nars was cruelty free because I think their pot concealer is probably one of the only ones that, I mean that's not the only reason why I wish Nars were cruelty free but their pot concealer does look like a good product. But yeah, most other pot, con like the Glossier stretch concealer, don't get it. I don't even think that, I don't think that's vegan but I've kind of swatched it before and I, I just don't get the hype, it feels so greasy and no, no, no. Unless you want really, really light coverage, I don't think that's a great one to go for. But this one has got silica in it, so it kind of blurs the skin a bit, kind of like a primer would. It blurs the skin a bit, but it also adds coverage, and it can look a tiny bit dry. If you do have dry patches, it can look dry, I'm not going to lie to you, but I think if you've got normal skin, or even oily skin, and you want a natural pot concealer, this might be one to check out. Picked up of Glow Organic, and it's probably gone off, don't get me wrong. It's probably That's why it looks a bit dry on me at the moment, but hey. To set my face, I've got, I mean, I've got my regular powder, which is the RMS Tinted Arm Powder, but I'm going to try a different one today. This is the Inica Mineral Mattifying Powder, and I showed this in one of my, oh gosh, that is powdery. That's a lot of powder. Okay, let me put that down. This is going to get on the carpet. Lisa's, actually, it, she can't be mad at me because this is a white powder and it's a cream carpet. So if anything, it's going to make it look more clean. That's the story we're going with anyway. This I picked up also in Birmingham. <laughs> Two trips to Birmingham, quite close together recently. But yeah, if you watched my video I did with Holland and Barrett, tap that off. I picked this up. This is wet. No, no, no. Why is that wet? So yeah, I picked this up in that video and I didn't really get a chance to properly test it out because I was putting, a pa I, I put this on top of a powder that I'd already put on top of a powder. So it was looking a little bit powdery by that stage, but I don't know if I'm gonna like this as much as I love the RMS Beauty Powder because I'm just so besottled, besotted. What is that word, besottled? I th I feel like it's besotted, but I wish it was besottled because that's a cuter word. Besottled, besotted. Don't know. So yeah, I'm not sure if that powder is going to take over my love of the RMS powder, but it's okay. It's alright. And I do like Inica as a brand. In fact, I've got another Inica product to show you in a minute. I'm just trying to open this. This is a Charlotte Tilbury contour wand, which I don't know if I've used on my channel before. I picked these up before Christmas. I got the contour wand and the highlight wand from the Comet Garden store. How do I feel about this? Actually, this isn't a natural product. I probably shouldn't use this in this video, but... I haven't used it on my channel, so I feel like it's probably relevant to show. First of all, first thing I think about this is that you don't get a lot of product. I remember when I first opened this, I squeezed it more than halfway and it was just air. How much of it? I spent like 25 quid on this. And, and how much product did I get? Not very much. It's like when you buy a packet of crisps and then 75% of that, that packet of crisps is not crisps, it's just air. So I wasn't happy with that, Charlotte. I know you've got to make your money somehow, but let's face it, it probably cost you 2p to make, so not that I'm bitter at all. <laughs> but yeah, what do I feel about this? I feel like it's nice if you've got dry skin and you want a really subtle contour. Um, I, I do think it's a nice product. Do I think it's worth the money? Possibly not. I feel like maybe you could get something similar for a lot cheaper. I think the colour is good in terms of a nice kind of shadow shade. If I mean, that doesn't really make sense, shadow shade. But like, for my skin tone it kind of works you know but I also kind of feel like it disappears into nothing I don't know let me know what you think of this if you've tried it I like the highlight one though but again I think you could probably get very similar for a lot cheaper I feel like I've become a lot more stingy with my makeup recently like I have to really like something high-end to recommend it like I said I went to Space K earlier and I saw the hourglass the new hourglass concealer mm -hmm. To be fair, I have just bought two new concealers, so I really didn't need it. But it looked beautiful, but I just thought, I'm not spending £32 on a concealer. Uh, that's mad money. And it's true, why do we spend this much money on stuff that literally costs pennies to make? Capitalism, probably. I'm going to pop a little bit of blush on. This is the Jane Ardell Pure Press Blush in the shade Queen Bee. And as you can see, I have been using the heck out of this. It is very pigmented, though. This is probably suited to someone of a deeper complexion because this would show up really nicely. Whereas on me, if I don't tap it off profusely before applying it, it um, looks kind of like a clown has entered the room. It has a really nice kind of spring, springtime tone to it, if that's the right phrase. Like if you dilute it, <laughs> dilute it. My words are not my friend today, are they? I don't know what I'm trying to say. Just if you brush it off a bit, it does give a really nice effect to the cheeks, even if you are the same sort of complexion as I. I actually am... Oh, God, I nearly dropped it. <laughs> actually, I'm going to add a bit more bronzer from this Tropic palette, which is kind of like a bespoke palette. You can make your own 
palettes should you wish and then just reuse the same palette and replace the pans as and when they run out also this brush i forgot to mention about these brushes i'm really enjoying the look look good feel better brushes the foundation brush didn't use this today because i did, haven't got foundation obviously i use a concealer so i just use my fingers but this is great for foundation i do always finish it off with a sponge just to kind of get rid of any brush strokes but in terms of like this doesn't absorb any product and it made me realize how much product sponges absorb because you need a lot less product this spreads everything around really nicely to give a really good full coverage without absorbing anything it does need a wash but yeah really enjoying that and also the yeah the bronzer brush very nice and their eye brushes are really nice as well God, it sounds like I've got a little excavation going on. <laughs> I'm actually going to do my lips before eyes. I like to do things this way around sometimes because it helps me going overboard on the eyes and looking too overdone. Because I feel like people do their lips last, but then sometimes when I do my lips last, I'm like, oh, damn, that's that you look like you've got a lot of makeup on there. Um, but also because I've got some new lip products to show you. So these are by Axiology. Doesn't say it on, oh yeah it does, Axiology. They sent over two of their soft creams and also one of their lip crayons. And I have actually tried their, I've tried their soft creams and their lip crayons before. Love, 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 love their products. They have got no parabens in, no to I'm just reading this off the box by the way. <laughs> no parabens, no toxins, no palm oil. I love the packaging as well, it's all, is it seeded paper or is it just recycled paper? I remember seeing that it's 100% recycled paper, handmade by women artisans in Bali. It's very cool, very, very cool. I'm not really sure which shade I'm gonna go for because just look, they've got the kind of shade, guide shade stickers on them. Just looking at these, I don't know if this is gonna go with what I had in mind, but let's just open them up and have a look. So the first shade is called Serene. This is one of their lip creams, which come in these bullets. Mm, I don't know about that shade. <laughs> not sure, let's give it a swatch. Mm, interesting, it's like a purple nude. I thought it would be more of a gray, but it, Looks, it does have a bit of grey to it, but it looks more like a lilac nude sort of shade. So that's called Serene. These kind of click in as well, which is really funky. They also have aluminium tubes instead of plastic tubes, which is great because aluminium can be recycled more readily than plastic. This shade is called Brave. Oh, mama. A really vampy. Oh, I say vampy. That's a bit more sheer than I thought it would be. It looks more intense in the tube than it does on my hand. So that is brave and then last but not least this lip crayon is called enduring i think i've tried this before this shade yeah this is more of a nude that's a really pretty nude shade you know what i'm gonna pop on the nude for now i know very boring very boring what did you expect um i'm gonna pop the nude on for now and then when i finish my eyes if i feel brave enough i'll put the darker shade on you smell like chocolate orange Mm, really lightweight on the lips. For my eyelids, I'm going to use the Chia and Camellia eyeshadow palette by Seraphine Botanical. <coughs> I've got hair in my throat. <coughs> Can you hear that ASMR? <laughs> Can you hear my kombucha? If you're a kombucha fan, the Equinox Raspberry and Elderflower. This is amazing. Honestly, I want a tap in my house that just flows with raspberry and elderflower kombucha. Pretentious, I know, but it, I'm speaking from the heart. <laughs> okay, the what I was trying to say is the Chia and Camellia eyeshadow palette by Seraphine Botanicals, and I am gonna go in with a light shade all over my eyelid. They don't have names, I don't think, no. I've had this for ages, literally years, and I feel like only now it's coming out just how long I keep my makeup for. <laughs> Basically, as long as it works and it doesn't irritate my eyes or my skin, I'm going to use it. I know that might be a little bit gross to some, but hey, I am kind of gross. It's time you learnt now. I feel like I just fancy a nice kind of pinky bronzy look, but like a pale pinky sort of shade. So I might take a little bit of the... Oh yeah, that's pretty. Kind of like a iridescent slash holographic. No, iridescent. I never know which one it is, and I know people get very picky when it comes to what iridescent and holographic are, so basically any time I mention one, I'll mention the other, just to kind of catch myself if I've said the wrong one. People can't really get mad because I've said them both. So technically I'm wrong, but technically I'm also right. I feel like I haven't really been... I have been into natural beauty, don't get me wrong, like behind the scenes I have been trying things, but I feel like on my channel I haven't been trying too many natural beauty products of late. When I say of late, I mean the past kind of year or so. Because I went through a phase of like learning more about skincare and beauty. And kind of of the scare tactics of some brands of how 
like natural, but don't get me wrong, the, the, I think it's all, it, there's no malice behind it. I don't think there is any malice behind it, but I do kind of think using, like scaring people into using brands that are claiming to be non-toxic is a bit iffy. I don't know, just for a while when I was learning, like just because something is a natural, natural ingredient in skincare doesn't necessarily mean it's good for your skin. For example, essential oils, just because maybe that's a natural ingredient, it comes from natural origin, doesn't necessarily mean it's great to cake on your skin. So, yeah, I kind of went through a phase of not showing too many natural, I mean, use the term natural loosely. Just because an ingredient is man-made or synthetic doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. And I know this has been going around recently, this isn't like a big revelation on my behalf, but I just feel like I have been, my love for natural products or more natural brands has been reignited because, you know, there are a lot of natural ingredients that are... I think the, the better way of going about it is being ingredient conscious, not being 100% natural. Do you know what I mean? Just being aware of what ingredients are and what are good natural ingredients and what are bad synthetic ingredients or not so great synthetic ingredients. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I don't know if I'm explaining that well. I'm going to take a bit of the Charlotte Tilbury highlighter wand. Like I said, I, I like this. I'm using this shade Spotlight, by the way, if you're interested. The, again, this is nice, but not very good value for money. Stingy McScroogey Stingy over here is not impressed. I'm not actually stingy, but I just feel like I've become a bit more strict on myself because I was spending so much money on makeup and it's just not necessary these days to have a nice, a nice makeup collection. You don't need to spend that much. I'm just going to take a little bit of the Essence Long Lasting Eye Pencil in the shade Hot Chocolate. This is basically a brown retractable coal pencil and it's really good actually. I'm really enjoying this. I think it makes my green eyes pop if I do say so myself. Um, and it's got writ vegan written on it. I feel like Essence have really hotted up on their vegan labelling of things. I've just sharpened that with a liquid liner. I'm going to take a little bit of the Hint Beauty. This is a sweet eyeshadow palette in Sweet Canyon and I'm just going to take the brown from that and just kind of soften slash set underneath my eyes where I've put that eyeliner pencil. For mascara I'm going to use the Inica Long Lash. I posted a little snap of this on my Instagram and I would like to reiterate my thoughts on that, that this is one of the best natural mascaras I've ever tried. In fact I feel like at the moment I'm reaching for it over my Lily Lolo Long Lash Mascara, or Big Lash Mascara, sorry. I love that mascara, but it is very dry, and I do find that it dries up within maybe three months, which I suppose is the suggested rotation of a mascara, but who sticks to that, really? So obviously I haven't tried this for a full three months, and I don't know how long it will last, but the effect is great. It has really got like this false lash effect to it. Such great thickening, just thickeningness. Thickening this? Not a word, Rebecca, not a word. But compared to some natural mascaras, for example, the 100% pure maracuja oil mascara, the Amani soy mascara, they're just very, they're like slightly lengthening. They're not very thickening. This is thickening. Like it's thick with two Cs. I love it a lot. And I'm really enjoying using this at the moment. Now, do I go in with the dark lip colour? I feel like we've come all this way. We might as well. Let's take Brave. Where is she? be brave and take brave and pop that on the lips. I feel like it definitely needs a lip liner so I'm just taking this Barry M lip liner in the shade dark pink and I feel like I just want to take a tiny little bit of shine off the middle of my face so I'm going to take the pressed mineral foundation by PHB Beauty just down the middle. I like this actually I feel like in moderation, I don't know if I would use it as my base foundation. If you would like to see this actually applied all over the face as a foundation, please do let me know. It's got SPF 30 in it and it's vegan, cruelty free, packaged in cardboard. Um, I like it for touch ups and to set very, very lightly, but I don't know if I'd use it as a foundation on its own. But we'll see. I can test it if you'd like to see that on my channel. Let me know. And yeah, that is the last product I wanted to mention. That is my makeup look for the day. I hope you enjoyed this little chit chat video. And if you did, maybe give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see some more from me. Let me know what products you've been liking and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys!